How's it going everybody? This is Cameron White with White Light Astrology. Giving you guys your weekly forecast, letting you know what's going on. Uh, first, I'd like to apologize. I didn't get to post this on uh, Monday morning like I wanted to. Um, been going, well, well, I'll talk about it in a minute. However, this whole Sun Chiron thing has been, you know, I mean, it's been stress stressful on me too. I, you know, I'm human. I go through things too and I just wasn't feeling it. I was deep in my shit and, you know, coming up with a bunch of excuses and a bunch of problems and all that kind of stuff, but feeling a lot better now, feeling a lot more determined, feeling a lot, just feeling the energy that needs to be going on. Uh, today is Tuesday and wow, it is, it's good, it's good. Um, sun going over Chiron, it, it's a big opportunity to really look at what, what is it that's driving you crazy? What is it that's hurting you? Why, like, you know, and this is with Pisces stuff. This is stuff that you could be unaware of that's like, you know, oh yeah, like, you know, I may do this and that and it's, you know, no big deal. However, realistically, it isn't good for your health. It isn't good for your mental health. It isn't good for your physical health or your spiritual health. And with the sun coming over here, this is a big look at how can we heal ourselves? How can we bring light to all of this? How can we really you know, take a positive stance on this. You know, now that we're coming to the like the last degrees of Pisces, it's time to look at everything in this spiritual whole sense. We've gone through all of the deep and dark stuff of Pisces, and now it's time to rise up and to feel that that end of Pisces energy. You know, it's like it's, it was the twelfth house. It's the last sign. It's like kind of like right before you go through that open door and you never get to go back. Like taking the red bill, red pill or blue pill. You know. It's not about, oh, which one do I choose? Which one works for me? Or unconsciously just taking one without listening to what the guy just said. You know, feel what you want to do and take whatever pill you want. Um, I mean, that's probably a horrible example, speaking of Pisces season. However, um, with all this weird energy we've been experiencing for the past, God, I don't know, at least a week after the sun hit Neptune and it's been going forward since then, um, it's been really weird energy, been really docile, really... Uh, slow and like confused like everything's just kind of like it's not like it's bad and then I mean for some people depending on what's going on with your chart it could be you know pretty bad however um it's not like this bad it's like this what's going on why do I have this funk like I should be excited I should be getting things going and it's time to like really take a look at why that was happening like you know going through all of that funk and uh, funk and stuff um Take a look at why you were creating that. Why why was this energy there? With the sun coming up onto Chiron, it could bring that whole like, ooh, I don't really know. It's a lot of anticipation. It's, you know, really nerve wracking. You're in a lot of pain. You want to get healed, but it hurts and you don't know. Like, it, it's been all over the place. However, now on Tuesday with the sun coming over it, it's time to really look at that. And this could bring up a lot of more insecurities, a lot more hurts, a lot more wounds. But you can't let it do that to you. You have to take the positive look at this in that the sun's going over Chiron. This is the time to really expose all of that. It's time to, you know, it's kind of like if you get a cut and you're like, oh, I don't want to go to the doctors. I don't have health insurance, blah, blah, blah. And then it gets infected and then it hurts and all the stuff. It's you finally going to the doctors and figuring out what's going on. That's the sun on Chiron. It's like, let's take an actual look at it. Let's what, how can we heal ourselves with this? Um, God, Mercury's in Aries today too. Woo! I Mercury in Pisces. I is I don't really care for that because it's like, uh, you're just like I don't even know what I'm saying. I don't even know what I'm thinking. Like everyone's lost. Everyone's just kind of on their own thing. Everyone's you know talking one way or another way. It's a lot to handle. However, now with Mercury in um, Aries, it's time to create something new, create something different, and create something better. So. When we have Mercury going from you know the last the last sign of the zodiac to the first sign of the zodiac, this is definitely a time of you know birth, beginning, starting new. Like, what's an idea that you've had wrapped up in your head forever that you want to go and accomplish, or what's something that you're like, yeah, you know what, I'm going to inspire myself to do this. It's just like what we were talking about with the sun and Chiron. Like, we're taking a big look at ourselves. We're starting to heal ourselves. Now it's time. What what's a new way that we can go about that? What's something new or different we can do? Like if you've never been to the gym or anything like that, it's a great time to start working out. It's a great time to start taking care of yourself. I mean, going back to the Venus and retrograde too, like we're really looking at how much we value ourselves and how much we love ourselves. It's, that's what it comes down to. And when it's opposing Jupiter retrograde, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's two things at the same time. It's you're taking a look at how do you love yourself? What is your relationship with yourself? How can I, you know, 
grow from this and how can I really take myself on? But with it opposing Jupiter and Libra, it's all about the, re and this just reflects your relationships with other people. So anything that's going on internally, you'll see reflected out onto other people. So make sure when you're taking yourself on that, you know, you're getting real, like, you know, what, how do I value myself? And when you find your play, when you start doing things that are like self-sabotaging and really just aren't good for you at all, that's where that bad energy is going to come from. And it, the universe is going to like, kind of like toss you around and like, Hey, like, you know what you should be focusing on? You know what you should be doing? Why are you doing this? Because it's totally hurting. Like, why do you keep going back? And now with Mercury going into Aries, it's time to think new. It's time to think different. It's time to be creative, passionate, determined, get focused on what you want to accomplish. Mercury rules not only communication, so you, you want to be communicating with this with other people. It's a great idea, great time to uh, inspire others to create ideas, share your ideas, get, uh, get the initiative going. However, Mercury also rules the, um, like your internal dialogue. How, you know, like if anyone ever asks, like, do you talk to yourself? You got to think about it and you go, no, I don't talk to myself. But you know, I mean, everyone talks to themselves. And you got to realize what you've been t saying this whole time. And I know during like Mercury and Pisces for the past couple weeks, it's been really like confused, lost. It's either this or that. I got to choose one. I'm not really sure. It's been really um, spiritual. Then it's been really low. It's, it's a lot of ups and downs in Pisces, but now with it in Aries where it's, you know, it wants to go, it wants to travel, it wants to speak, it wants to be its valuable self. That's what you got to really put inside of yourself and really think about all day long, even though that sounds a little um, intense. With Mercury and Aries now, get started on something new. What do you want to create? We're going back to the Venus and retrograde of... Well, how do I value myself? Well, create something new. Like, you know, go to the gym, start dating people, start, you know, buying nicer clothes, take a shower every day. Like, let's get out of this funk, all this crap that we went through with Pisces, and let's start, let's start doing stuff. We got, okay, we have the, we have Mars and Taurus now. Like, it just keeps getting better. We have Mars and Taurus now. Mars and Taurus is moving forward. It's slow, but it's steady, but it's determined that it will get what it wants. Mars and Taurus is... It's very stubborn, but that's a good thing. You want it to be stubborn. You want Mars and Taurus to not accept anything but what it wants, nothing less. And with Mars and Taurus, it's gonna be slow. It's going to you know, gradually get there, but it's that step by step. It's the compound effect of doing something every single day. It's pushing you to actually make stuff real, especially Mars and Taurus. This is the time, especially with Mercury and Aries, this is the time to make it real. If you have a if you had a dream or an idea or a vision that you've had in this Pisces season, you're like, man, I want to go do this. It, with all this energy, it's time to make it real. It's time to start putting the gears in work, you know. And sometimes it's kind of hard to move on. We got, like, after all that we just experienced, especially still in the Venus retrograde, after the Sun and Neptune, after Sun and Chiron, after all of that stuff, you got to be able to move forward. It, you can't be a victim of astrology and just be like, oh, I'm so wiped out from that. Like, it's so hard to move forward. You have to find the inspiration which is going back to Jupiter and Libra you want to feel positive you want to feel happy you want to feel that with everybody and everything Libra rules relationships and guess what you have a relationship with everything and that includes even back to yourself going back to the Venus and retrograde God it's all it's all connected um see what else is going on today on Tuesday moon going over Jupiter this is big this is gonna be a big highlight of what that's looking like in like your life like as far as um Moon and Libra, it's all about getting that like outside validation. It's about, and that's more in the negative connotation, but it's about what, do, what does, ma what, what does make, uh, what makes other people happy? What makes you happy? Like what creates a win-win situation? And now with this emotional emphasis on it with Jupiter right there, it's like, oh, it goes back down to you. You gotta create it inside of you. You gotta go, what do I love to give to people? What do I love to create? What do I want to see in other people? And how do I want to see that in myself first? And then moving forward. Um, then the moon's going to be going into Scorpio, which, you know, I love Scorpio energy. It's just always crazy and up and down. But thank God, like, this moon in Scorpio, like it. I, I like this. Um, it's the only thing you'll be doing is opposing Mars for a little bit, so don't get too caught up in that, but use it for your advantage. With the moon going into Scorpio, it's a time to get invested into your beliefs, get invested into your emotions behind everything, and to take it that one step beyond. Um, 
Scorpio's passionate. Scorpio's got the power. Scor like, I, Scorpio just makes shit happen, man. And it's up to their emotional courage in order how what circumstance or what uh, results that they want to create. Because Scorpio can literally just run through a field and destroy everything, set it all on fire. Or Scorpio can go through here and make sure everything is taken care of. Everything is loved. Everything is appreciated. Everything is flourishing. And that's it's such an interesting dynamic with Scorpio. Um, anyway, with the moon right there, it's going to be uh, sextiling, not sextiling Saturn, what is it doing? Uh, trining Neptune and sextiling Pluto. Trining Neptune, going back to what we were talking about a few weeks ago, where it's about our dreams, it's about what's real, what's not, what's a fantasy, what's an illusion, what what is actually possible, like what can we actually create? What's real? What's possible? Which, honestly, no nothing is impossible. However, with the moon in Scorpio, it's time to go back to that feeling. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want to create it? How much energy are you going to put into it? Like, how down are you? It's like, all chips are in. Like, I'm, I'm all in. I'm ready to go. And that's, you got to put that emotional passion, that drive into it. Going back to the Mercury and Aries now. Get driven. Get focused. Get clear. Um, then we got, later on this week, I think it's going to be Thursday. Thursday or Friday. I'm not really, I didn't remember. I didn't write down the, date, the dates. Um, Venus and Mercury will collide. And, um, well, at least like from our point of view. So when Mercury's going retrograde, not Mercury, damn it. <laughs> Venus is going retrograde, Mercury's going forward. They're going to hit each other. Um, and this is in Aries. Whoo, uh, this is going to be intense. Um, it's a lot of things coming to fruition about what we were saying about with this Mercury and Aries, you know, moving forward, getting your shit done, you know, getting this new idea or, you know, whatever we were talking about. As Mercury comes towards Venus with this Venus retrograde about relationship with self, how do you love, how do you show up in relationships, how do you love yourself, what do you really value, what really, you know, gets you fired up for life. With Mercury right there, it's it's gonna be a big slap in the face. And that's that's basically if you are if you know that you're not in alignment with what you should be doing, that's I, I would definitely stay very wary that day. Shit shit can come up like that for you. Um it, that's gonna be a big day. However, if you get right if you get right with yourself, you get in tune with this energy, that's gonna be the day where you're like, I fucking get it. It's time to go. Like I'm I'm ready and it's gonna this is when it gets tricky because as they collide there'll be a lot of intense energy on that but then as they separate as Venus goes backwards and Mercury goes forward it's gonna be a harder and harder for you to keep pushing forward it's gonna take a lot like this Venus retrograde ain't no it's not some small shit guys like it's it's gonna be built it's gonna be big so use this forceful juggernaut of energy of self-realizations of you know really getting it together because I mean after Venus goes direct it's gonna be so great like it's gonna be all good so use this time now and it may hurt may bring up a lot of things but use it like use this transformative energy this passionate new energy to go do something Aries is one Aries is I Aries rules the face Aries is, you know, it's the goat. And I mean, like, if you even just look at, like, the the Zodiac, like, picture, it's so funny how intimidating that they look, that they make the ram look. It's so funny to me how intimidating this ram looks. Because rams, I mean, like, you're just like, oh, this is a goat with some big horns. But, like, the way that they make it look, it's like, wow, it's got that forceful energy that I'm here, that I am presence. And you gotta, you gotta use that this week, especially with this Venus, when Venus and Mercury hit. Oh boy! Um, but don't worry, don't freak out. Just use it, because the the universe is gonna throw things at you left and right. It's never gonna stop. There's never gonna be a perfect time in the astrology. There's never gonna be. Well, I mean, there's actually a few perfect times. However, there's always gonna be some sort of negative energy to look at. And if you find yourself looking at it and not looking at the positive, how can you use this negative energy? This is here, all of this here, all this energy is here for you to use for your benefit. It's not, oh, well, you know, Mercury's gonna hit Venus and this Venus retrograde, oh, fuck my life, oh, this is going wrong, blah, 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 blah. No, fuck that shit. Take that saying, I'm very upset. I'm like, let's say with, with this Venus and Mercury collide, it's going back down to what is my worth? What 
do I value and why the fuck am I not doing it? I want to be moving forward, but so much of my emotions are holding me back and I'm not sure what it is. That's not a time to just sit there and whine and complain about it and feel it. Or I shouldn't say not feel it. Um, it's, it's a time to go, I want to create something different. I want to create something new. I'm tired of feeling this old shitty way. I'm tired of holding myself back from what I actually am capable of and limiting myself and move forward. Like, use it, like I always tell people this in, you know, argue, argue with me if you want, but get pissed. Get fucking pissed off at what you're creating in your life and do something about it. I mean, it's your life. You're in charge. You got everything that you could possibly ever need to create whatever you want with. So use it. And if you really are passionate about it, you really have that desire, it will happen. And yeah, it's going to be good. And then going on into this weekend, um, which I'll do another video about too, Moon's going to be conjuncting Saturn, Mars will be sextiling Neptune, so these are two big things. As the Moon's going over Saturn, this is that big Saturn push of what are, what are my limits and how am I pushing myself beyond those? Like, Saturn is a very, I don't want to say interesting, but a very simple planet. Um, when the Moon's going over right here where Saturn's at, it's going to be, okay, how am I limiting myself? How am I being limited by my outside circumstances? That, by the way, you're creating. You create your own reality. So if you have these outside circumstances that are holding you back, I'm sorry, it's all made up. You could totally change the story if you want. But with the moon over Sagittarius, it's going to be, you know, what do I value? What do, what am I limited by? How am I limiting myself? And what am I capable of? Where am I capable of going? Where am I, cap what am I capable of seeing? What am I capable of learning? And that's the push that you want. And with this Mars uh, sextiling Neptune, it's going to be like, it's time to make dreams come true. It's time to make that shit real. It's time to get on the gear. It's time to get on the ball. It's time to fly. It's time to spread your wings. It's time to make it happen. It's kind of like that, you know, if you ever been with a kid and he's learning how to swim, he doesn't want to jump in off the diving board. Someone just pushes him. Like, just do it. Like, it's going to happen. Get it done. <laughs> uh, but yeah, with the Mars and Neptune, that's going to be getting that illusion, for one, out and clear. Because Mars and Taurus is just going to be like, I'm not, I'm calling that bullshit. I got to move forward. And as it moves forward, it's going to be more and more manifesting what you, what you actually desire as far as um, what you want, what your dreams are. What we were talking about with Neptune, how things could be an illusion and how things are real, how things are dreams and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's what I got for you guys. Um, I'll be doing another video this weekend. Um, thank you guys so much for liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing, uh, YouTube, f Facebook, Twitter. If you guys follow me on all those, I absolutely love you to death. Um, and I'm sending you guys a lot of white light. It's a damn good week. You just gotta make use of it and don't get, don't get caught up in your shit. Don't get sad. Don't get, you know, and don't pull out the hammer. Like, don't start beating yourself up over things that you should have done or anything like that. You live in the now. You live right now. Don't get mad about the past. Don't get, you know, stressed out about the future. You live right now. Do what's going to make you happy in five minutes, ten minutes, an hour, two hours, tomorrow. Do whatever is going to make you feel better later, right now. And that's what's going to really help you get to this week. So, once again, guys, uh, I love you all. And it's a beautiful day. And I will uh, see you guys this weekend.